Hey and welcome back. This is the boring head that I made last year. If I remember correctly, it was one of the first projects that I made with the new milling machine. And as far as boring heads go, this one works just okay. If I'm careful, I can cut bearing seats and get really good press fits with them. And I really couldn't ask more from what was essentially an afternoon project. But of course, there are a few things that I'd like to improve. For one, a slightly bigger shank to fit the 20mm collets that I currently use would be a big improvement. Currently, I have to swap out the collets every time I use it. A bigger dial and a tighter fitting lead screw would make it a lot easier for me to set up the diameters that I'm going to cut. And as well as that, making it bigger, like physically bigger, would be a big improvement. This is only 30mm in diameter, and it does limit me in the sizes that I can cut. For this project, I have a bit of choice in deciding what I can make the new boring head from. Preferably, I'd like to use 4140. That's chromoly. Chromoly is a great high tensile steel, and my machines can machine it, but with the sizes that I have on hand, it's only about 8mm wider than the current boring head, so instead I'm going to go with a piece of medium tensile steel. I believe this is 1045. It's not going to be as strong as the Chromoly, but it is about 10mm wider, and I think this will be a better choice, plus it'll be a lot easier for my machines to machine it. The first step will be to clean up the end and then turn down the shank so that it fits onto the collet. I've loaded up the half centre and I'll give it a coating of some high temperature, high pressure grease. Apparently this is the grease that you're supposed to use on dead centres. Apparently it holds up to the heat and pressure of machining better than the regular stuff that I use. Um, in practice, the other stuff seems to work fine, but I'm sure this stuff will work just a little bit better. And that is the shank mostly turned down to size. Getting it to this point took a bit longer than I was expecting. This 1045 stuff is pretty tough stuff for my small lathe to machine. I've let the part cool off and measuring it with the micrometers, the shank is about 0.01 millimeters oversized. Instead of turning it with a cutter, I'll simply sand it down until I get a good fit on the collet. And that's a pretty good fit.
The first thing I'd like to do is cut the dovetail and to do that I'll remove the bulk of the material with a roughing end mill. Now normally I like to flood the cup with coolant when I use roughers because roughers tend to produce a lot more heat than a normal end mill. However the vise isn't properly set up for coolant at the moment. It's not going to properly drain into the tea slots. So instead I have a bottle set up with coolant and that should be good enough to keep it cool. And that turned out really nice. If we compare it to the old boring head, the new dovetail is a lot larger and it should make it a bit more rigid. Speaking of which, the old boring head was clamped in place by three grub screws. I did machine up some pins to help it hold in place and hopefully not damage the dovetails, but obviously they didn't work too well and it still ended up damaging the dovetails. Since I have a lot more room to work with on this bigger boring head, I can set it up with the slitting saw and cut a channel next to the dovetail. This should hopefully make a better clamp and this is much more similar to how it's done on most boring heads. <laughs> And whilst I have it clamped, I can drill three holes for a set of grub screws. Now the way that this is intended to work is the grub screws are tightened against the channel and this will clamp down on the dovetail. Now testing the tapped holes showed that the threads didn't make it all the way to the bottom. Thankfully though I made up this bottoming tap on a previous occasion and that should allow me to tap all the way to the bottom. If you compare this tap to the bottoming tap that came in the tap set, you can see why it didn't make it all the way to the bottom. Next I can start to make the bottom part. Now the V-block was a bit too tall for this setup, so what I've decided to do is clamp the work as is, and I'll have to be extra careful because clamping on a round surface isn't really the best setup. And that was 100% on me not being careful and not tightening up the vise enough.
And that is about as good of a fit as I could ask for. That is pretty much perfect. And even with only one screw, that clamps up really well. Next, I can machine the bottom flats for the grub screws. I'll use the rougher to remove the bulk of the material, and I'll create a bunch of step downs to make it easier for the radius tool. Now I still don't have a proper ball end mill, so I'll use a router bit like I've done many times in the past. These router bits are carbide, so it will machine the steel without any issue, but it really isn't set up for this type of work. The geometry really isn't set up for cutting steel, and it's only two flutes, but if you take it slowly and run it at a pretty high RPM, the end result looks pretty good. I can now start to add the holes for the boring bar holders. And that is starting to look like a proper boring head. Next, I need to machine a hole for the dial and lead screw. The old one had a 10mm dial, and that was a bit too small, so this time I'm aiming for something closer to 18. I'll first drill all the way through with a 5mm drill. I can then get progressively bigger with the drills, but only going halfway. And once I've broken through, it's always better to switch over to an end mill rather than sticking with a twist drill. And I've got to say, that 18mm end mill left an almost perfect finish on the hole. Now the reason why I chose 18mm for the dial is because the T-slot cutter that I have is also 18mm. This will allow me to cut the other half of the dial on the bottom piece and have it all match up. And I've got to say, that looks really nice. Those two pieces match up almost perfectly. And I'll now tap that hole for M6x1. M6x1 is a pretty good thread to use because every turn of the lead screw is going to advance the cutter by 1mm. 
My only problem though is the tap isn't long enough. Ideally in this situation I'd have a reduced shank tap, but buying one for just one hole didn't seem all that worth it. So what I did was I got out the old tool post grinder and I loaded it and the tap into the lathe. With the hole now tapped, I can start to machine the lead screw and dial. Now, I don't have any bronze in the right size or length, otherwise I would have used that, but instead I opted for a piece of low carbon steel. Now what I'm aiming for is a snug and tight fit with the threads. Doing this will hopefully minimise backlash, something that was a bit of an issue with the old boring head. With the old lead screw in the other boring head, I simply cut it with a die and the threads were a little bit sloppy in the tapped hole. Doing it this way I can make it a bit more tighter and hopefully reduce backlash. <laughs> and that is looking really close to being finished. The lead screw and dovetails have a very smooth action and it's a lot nicer than it is on the old boring head. The final thing left to do is add some graduations to the dial so I know how far I am advancing the cutter. I don't do that much engraving in the workshop so I don't have a huge range of engravers and what I have is mostly for CNC routers. Now I've got quite a few of these V-point cutters in various sizes, but I've never gotten great results from them, and I doubt that my milling machine does high enough RPMs for them to actually work properly. I'm just guessing, but it wouldn't surprise me if you need at least 8 to 10,000 RPMs for these to work, and my milling machine only goes up to about 2,800. I do have a bunch of these other single flute cutters which are more suited to lower speeds, although they do leave a much wider line. I'll remove the vise and then get the dividing head set up. Unfortunately, with the dividing head now facing up, there simply isn't enough room to accommodate the tool holder, the dividing head, and the workpiece. 
I also don't have any other collets that will take this 1 8 inch tooling, so I think I will need another way of approaching this. In the tool drawer, I found an old tool holder that fits the old 18mm collet, which I don't use anymore. I took it to the lathe where I parted off the front and then drilled through a 1 8 inch hole. I can then add a side locking grub screw and that will effectively make this a very compact side locking tool holder. I'm not expecting the run out on this tool to be anything great, but it's as good as it's going to get. Now I settled on there being 20 divisions on this dial each of them being 0.05mm. This allows me to step up the diameter of the bore that I'm cutting by 0.1mm at a time, which should be good enough. If I ever need to set up a finer offset, I can always measure it with a dial indicator and set it up that way. Now that is definitely not the greatest engraving that I've ever seen, although this milling machine was probably a little bit slow for this engraver. And off camera, I added one to the bottom part. A quick polish on the Scotch-Brite wheel will remove any scratches or dings that I got whilst machining, and then I can get it assembled. And that is the boring head done. On face value, it's not too different to the old one, but in actuality, once you start using it, you can easily tell that this is a much better product overall. Everything fits a lot nicer, and the movement in the lead screw and mechanism just feels a lot nicer. Overall, I am really happy with it. Plus, I'm sure that the extra mass makes a difference because this one is easily two and a bit times heavier than the old one and I'm getting much better results when boring. Overall, that was definitely a lot nicer to use than the old one and the resulting hole definitely has a much better finish. Overall, I am really happy how this project turned out, and I'm looking forward to using this in future projects. And that's about it for now. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you very much for watching. See you next week.